Uh, European Union energy ministers want a new energy pact with Russia to guarantee Europe's supply of natural gas and oil. This follows the dispute in January between Russia and the Ukraine, which temporarily halted gas supplies to Europe. A closer partnership would require Russia giving access to its pipelines and other gas supplies and allowing EU companies to win contracts. Joining us to talk about working with the Russians over energy, David Zykin, CEO of Siberian Energy, a company already doing business with Russia. Nice to see you, David. Nice Thanks very much you. for coming in. And, and um, just to tell the, the audience a little bit more about the business, you're listed in the U.S. We are probably one of the only U.S.-based company with 100% assets in Russia and Western Siberia. Okay, and you've got some joint venture projects in we've Russia got, currently. We've got some joint venture projects. Are they generating uh, revenue for you at this stage? No. So it's an investment It's period. exploration it, play. Okay, good. Um, Clearly, that Europe was um, was taught a lesson about energy relationships with Russia earlier this year, and I think we're all still trying to work out how good a partner um, we can be with the Russians when it comes to energy exploration and discovery. Give us the benefit of, of your experience of, of working in this area. I think uh, Russian-Ukrainian relationship is a bit more complicated than our relationship with the Russian oil and gas companies and the government. Um, unlike many other governments in emerging markets, in our opinion, Russian government probably the stable and uh, relatively democratically elected and uh, it poses no threat to foreign companies operating in Russia. What is the, uh, uh, do you think that the, the, the key to working with Gazprom or other Russian partners for a profitable relationship? The key to working with Gazprom or any other major Russian government or non-government company, in most of the cases it's a relationship-based uh, business. You have to understand your partner, you have to understand the uh, problems they're facing. Uh, also, uh, there are many other issues such as labor issues or uh, political climate, tax laws. even in. Uh, uh, best example of probably the best example of uh, current modern laws. I believe the laws at the North Sea exploration uh, were changed 20 times in the last 20 years. Mm. So you have to. We still have an impression that you need to have good political capital in Moscow wherever you're operating around Russia. How do you get that capital without perhaps being seen to? Offer a bribe or, or, or cross the, you know, shall we say, you know, the, the, the line of good business practice or best business practice as we'd understand it in Western terms? Russia is changing dramatically. Um, in, in the last 10 or 15 years, we watched uh, Russia going from socialism to capitalism. In some of the cases, uh, we don't have many good examples, but in the last five to 10 years, it changed dramatically. And uh, most of the horror stories, in my opinion, going back to 80s or 90s. Louisa, come on in. David, good morning. What's good morning. the most difficult thing about doing business in Russia? The most difficult, one of the most difficult things doing business in uh, Western Siberia is in winter temperature. Sometimes it's, it's minus 50. Uh, apart from that, I was thinking apart more from, from, that, from a business you need, aspect. You need to have a strong local partner who understands the uh, technical problems and uh, legal problems which might arise. But, but do you find you're up against political opposition as well? Do you find that there are lots of politics involved in doing business? Um, oil is geopolitics, uh, but uh, where we are in Western Siberia, it's, um, I would say it's a bit simpler than uh, in many other places in the world due to the fact that, um, you know, the, 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 the first time uh, Russian newspapers mention oil is, it goes back to 1702 when Peter the Greatest uh, uh, established the Russian newspaper Vedomosti. And since then, uh, Russia in, uh, you know, in 1988, pumped astonishing 11.5 million barrels a day. So uh, we are not creating anything new. We are, we are walking through the past which was created a long time ago. Guy. David, in terms of the potential of the Russian oil industry at the moment, would you say that the Russian oil industry is operating at 50% potential, 75% potential? And how much money do you think needs to be invested in the industry over the next, say, five to ten years in order to raise it up to the kind of levels that many people assume that Russia should be producing at? 
a couple of points. Um, independent uh, audit suggests that uh, there are 150 billion barrels still in Russia. In Western Siberia is, uh, uh, needs to be discovered. And uh, in the simple terms, um, Russia has more potential than any other emerging markets. We could discuss Brazil, Venezuela, Nigeria, Iraq. Um, so to answer your question, uh, I, I still I would like to go back to 88 when Russia pumped 11.3 million barrels a day uh, versus current 9.5. So there is upside potential. It, it, it will not change dramatically unless there are billions of dollars will be invested in Siberia, but the potential is huge. Anas. Yeah, uh, just following on from that, David, as we heard from Gazprom a few, few days ago, you, there's, you've got, there's a slight extraction problem now with prices where they are. Extra extraction in existing facilities is probably above you know, the optimal rates. Um, and there is also a need for a huge investment program. Isn't there this danger that before the new capacity comes on stream, which is three, four, five years away, the extraction in existing facilities will actually become too high and you'll undermine your existing asset base in order to finance um, you know, future development. I think the question really boils down to can Gazprom alone or the big Russian oil majors manage all of this exploration and development or do you need to open up the sector even more? We need access of and flow of Western capital. Gazprom on its own or many other independent oil companies, they could improve and they could pump more oil and gas. But if we see inflow of Western capital, it will change dramatically in the next year, two or three years. And we have great examples. Look at the Sahalin, look at the Stockman. And uh, Russians are more willing and accepting now than the decade ago. Mm -hmm. uh, David, very good to see you. Thank you very much for coming Thank in. You very much. Um, David Zaikin joining us from Siberian Energy. Uh, we need to uh, quickly update you on the headlines. Roman Paris on.